There is a common misconception that cassava can grow well in poor quality soil and requires no additional nutrient inputs. But this is not correct. Cassava requires nutrients, just like any other crop. Cassava has a long growing time of 10 to 15 months. This means it has more time to take up nutrients compared to other crops like maize, for example. Cassava can adapt its growth and will grow more slowly in poor soils. That way, it can produce some yield even in poor soils, unlike maize. But cassava still needs sufficient nutrients and providing more nutrients to your cassava will increase crop growth and yield. The application of fertilizer is meant to provide required nutrients to the crop. In this video, we will discuss how to apply fertilizer to cassava correctly and explain a few considerations you should take into account when doing so. There will be six topics of discussion. First, we will talk about the importance of good agronomic practices that are needed before you consider investing in fertilizer. Second, we will discuss the process of choosing the best types of fertilizer. Third, we will talk about how you can decide the proper rate of fertilizer to apply to your crops. Fourth, we will talk about cost-benefit considerations to help you determine if it is worth it to use fertilizer. Fifth, we will help you learn about the best timing for fertilizer application and how to get the best results. And sixth, and lastly, we will discuss proper fertilizer application methods. Let's begin discussing these topics one by one, starting with the first topic. Applying fertilizer to cassava only makes sense if you follow proper practices to ensure a good and healthy crop. First, avoid using local cassava varieties that are vulnerable to diseases such as cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak. Use high yielding, pest and disease resistant varieties. If you can, get your cuttings from an accredited producer to ensure your planting material is disease free. Secondly, you should prepare your land properly before planting. This includes good weed control. We have another video that explains in six easy steps the best suited procedure for clearing, tilling and planting at good density as well as best methods to control weeds effectively. Consider watching it for more information. Once you have decided to apply good agronomic practices, you can now begin the next step. It's time to choose the best fertilizer for your cassava crop. Cassava requires three important nutrients, nitrogen, or in short N, potassium, or K, and phosphorus, known as P. Nitrogen ensures vigorous growth of the stems and leaves and is the most important nutrient. Potassium supports development and growth of the bulking cassava storage roots, and phosphorus helps provide energy for good crop growth. Note, too, that these nutrients are not all required at once. Nitrogen and phosphorus are important early to stimulate the stem and canopy growth while potassium is more important during the later stages, when the roots start bulking. For vigorous growth, you will need fertilizers that supply all these nutrients. You could use a compound fertilizer. For example, NPK 15, 15, 15 or NPK 17, 17, 17 are good options. Or you can combine a set of different fertilizers. You could combine dimonium phosphate or DAP for phosphorus and nitrogen, urea for extra nitrogen, and myriad of potash or MOP for potassium. These two options are what we will look at in this video. However, your local agri dealer may have other fertilizers available that are especially suitable for cassava, so you can consult with a trusted agri dealer for more information. Let's now talk about how to choose the right rate of fertilizer to apply. This is the most difficult part of fertilizer use on cassava. The correct rate of fertilizer depends on three things. One, fertility of your soil. Two, when you plant your cassava. Three, 
cost of fertilizer and the cassava sale prices. First, choosing the right rate of fertilizer for your cassava depends on the fertility of your soil. Poor soil with low nutrient amounts will require more fertilizer compared to fertile soils with more nutrients. If your field is fertile and has a yield above 20 tons per hectare, then investing in fertilizer may not be advisable because your yield may not increase much farther. Second, it depends on when you plant your cassava. Planting cassava at the proper time and in the right weather conditions will mean your plants will be able to yield more and be able to respond better to fertilizer. Your crop needs to receive sufficient rainfall after application of fertilizer so that the nutrients can dissolve and be taken up by the roots of the crop. Lastly, it depends on the value of your cassava produce and the cost of fertilizer. Buying fertilizer is only worth it if the price of the fertilizer is affordable and the price of the cassava produce is high enough that your increased yield will make up for the cost of the fertilizer and add to the revenue. Investing in fertilizer is only sensible if that investment is profitable. Your extension agents have tools that can help you determine the most appropriate rate of fertilizer for your field. They can also help you calculate if the use of fertilizer is profitable and make the right decisions on fertilizer use. In the next step, we will provide some examples of how you do a cost benefit analysis. To do a cost benefit analysis, you need to be well informed. First, you need to find out which types of fertilizer are available from your local agro dealer and the cost of each one. Second, you need to think about the market where you will be selling your cassava and make sure you have a customer who will buy your additional cassava. You need to think about the price at which you can sell your cassava produce and consider how reliable the price is. Does the price change over time? How much does the price change? Will you still make money even if you sell your cassava at a lower price? You should be cautious and assume the price of your cassava will be relatively low when you calculated expected gains to make sure you will turn a profit. Because cassava can be harvested between 10 and 15 months, you can delay harvesting and await higher prices for your cassava produce. You could also consider entering in a contract agreement with a starch factory or cassava processing centre to obtain a price guarantee. Such an agreement is very interesting to make well-informed decisions on fertiliser use. Let's now look at a simple example calculation for MPK 151515 fertiliser. A good rate of MPK 151515 application is 5 bags of 50 kgs per bag per hectare. This will usually increase crop yield by about 8 tonnes per hectare. Let's use these figures to calculate the cost of fertiliser and compare it with how much value you will get from the increased crop yield. Let us assume you can purchase NPK 151515 at 7,000 naira per bag. Five bags will cost you 35,000 naira. Next, let's consider the increased cassava yield. Assume that you will sell your cassava at 12,000 naira per ton. That means that if MPK increases yield by 8 tons, you will make an additional 96,000 naira of revenue. The cost of the fertilizer was 35,000 naira per hectare, but the total revenue is 96,000 naira. This means you will make an extra 61,000 naira. So this investment is worth it. However, if the fertilizer was more expensive, say 10,000 naira per bag, and your cassava price was lower, say 8,000 naira per ton, you would only make an extra 14,000 naira, which may not justify the expense and labor of applying fertilizer in your field. Let's do this calculation again using urea, dimonium phosphate, and myriad of potash. For one hectare of cassava, you could use, for example, three 50 kg bags of urea, two 25 kg bags of dimonium phosphate, 
and two 50 kg bags of muriate of potash. You can expect a yield increase by about 15 tons per hectare. Let us assume that your agro dealer sells urea for 7,000 naira per 50 kg bag, dimonium phosphate at 7,500 naira per 25 kg bag, and muriate of potash at 12,000 naira per 50 kg bag. That means your cost would be 21,000 naira for three bags of urea, plus 15,000 naira for two bags of dimonium phosphate, plus 24,000 naira for two bags of muriate of potash. This is a total cost of 60,000 naira. This will provide you with an additional 15 tons of yield per hectare. Assuming again that you will sell your cassava for 12,000 per ton, you will get an additional 180,000 naira. Subtracting the cost of fertilizer, this is a profit of 120,000 naira from fertilizer application to your cassava crop. Once you have determined whether or not using fertilizer use will be profitable, you can determine the proper amount of fertilizer you will need for your field. Let's calculate this using NPK 151515 as an example. The recommendation was to use 5 bags NPK 151515 per hectare. So how do you calculate this recommendation to fit the measurements of your field? Here's how. Let's assume you have a field of 60 by 50 meters. This works out to an area of 3,000 square meters or 0.3 hectares. The recommended application rate is 5 bags of MPK 15, 15, 15 per hectare, which is 100 meters by 100 meters or an area of 10,000 square meters. Next, we take the number of bags, 5, and then divide it by the 10,000, the square meters in a hectare, then multiply this by 3,000, the total area of your field. The result is 1.5, meaning you should use about 1.5 50 kg bags for your field of 60 by 50 meters. You can use the same method to calculate application rates for any field area. You can contact your local extension agent or agri-dealer for assistance if you are not sure how to calculate this on your own. Now, let's discuss the best timing of fertilizer application. Fertilizer should be applied when the soil is moist, after one or two good rain showers. If you expect that rains will continue for at least four weeks after the fertilizer is applied, this will allow the fertilizer to dissolve and be taken up by the cassava roots. Remember, the cassava plant takes 10 to 15 months until it is harvested. Cassava takes up nutrients over a longer period of time than most crops, such as maize. For best results, you should spread the application of fertilizer as much as possible over the first three to four months of growth, as long as the soil is moist. Do not apply all the nutrients at once, as some may be washed away. You should also think about rainfall conditions. For example, if your rainfall is reliable and regular, and you're planning to apply four bags of MPK 15, 15, 15, you can apply one bag at planting, one bag after one month, another bag after two months, and the final bag three months after planting. However, if you are in an area with less reliable rain, you should apply fertilizer after a good rain and use your experience to assess how many rains are usually falling. If you usually have rain during at least four months after planting, you should split your fertilizer into four portions and apply one portion every month. If you expect only three months, you should split into three portions. You need to consider that after fertilizer application, it is necessary to receive rain to ensure the fertilizer can dissolve and be taken up by the cassava. If you are using different fertilizers, you should apply those high in phosphorus, such as dimonium phosphate, immediately after planting. Nitrogen and potassium fertilizers should be spread as much as rainfall conditions allow during the first three to four months after planting. Now, 
Let's discuss the correct way to apply cassava fertilizer. Make a small, half moon shaped trench about 15 to 20 centimeters from each cassava plant. It should be about 5 centimeters or 2 inches deep. Spread the fertilizer in the trench and cover it with soil. Covering with soil ensures the fertilizer can dissolve and the nutrients can be taken up by the roots of cassava. Distributing the amount of fertilizer equally to each plant is a bit tricky and requires some experience. It is helpful to first divide the fertilizer into equal amounts for each row of cassava in your field. For example, if you need to apply 5 bags of fertilizer and your cassava field has 50 rows, then one bag would be for 10 rows and each row should receive 5 kgs of fertilizer. Measure the 5 kgs of fertilizer and start applying the fertilizer to each plant in the first row, but be careful not to apply too much. Make sure you remain with some fertilizer when you reach the end of the line. Return on the same line and apply the remainder of the fertilizer. Repeat the process for the second row, but now try and get closer to distributing the fertilizer equally to each plant. Still continue being careful that you have some fertilizer left when you reach the end of the line. After doing this a few times, you will have a good understanding of how much to apply to each plant. Another way is to use a crown bottle cap to measure the amount of fertilizer required for each plant. If you are planting your cassava at the recommended density of 12,500 plants per hectare, then an application rate of one bag per hectare is about the same as one full, heaped, crown bottle cap per plant. Let's summarize what we've learned. First, cassava responds well to fertilizer, but only if you have access to the right fertilizer types at affordable prices and if the increase in yield is worth it due to attractive prices for your cassava produce. Cassava requires fertilizers that contain nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus, so you should contact your local agro-dealer to find an appropriate product. The application rate of your fertilizer is important and must be calculated carefully to ensure profitability. You can consult with an agro-dealer or extension agent to calculate the appropriate application rate. The timing of fertilizer application is important. Fertilizer should ideally be spread as evenly throughout the first three and four months after planting as rainfall conditions allow. Fertilizer should be applied around each plant in half moon trenches and covered with soil. It will take a bit of experience to make sure you distribute it evenly for each plant. Lastly, Remember that using fertilizer only makes sense when good agronomic practices are followed. This includes using disease-resistant cassava varieties, good land preparation, and good weed control. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you need more information, here are some handy resources.